There we go. What's going on, everybody? Thank y'all for tuning in for another one. If y'all saw on probably the previous video, y'all got introduced to the B-Wagon. So this video is going to be about our the first modifications made to the B-Wagon. And those modifications are going to be involving the bed. As y'all can see, this is a dump bed. But for a beekeeping truck, I don't need a dump bed. So we're going to be getting all this crap out of here, hopefully. And that's from what I can see, it won't be too bad of a job at all. These two braces here, and where the cylinder and the hoist is actually connected to the bed frame. So we're gonna got the safety stand in so this thing won't fall on you. But we're gonna cut these two welds here on each side. Should be free there. And then we'll go back here to the pivot point this channel get that weld that weld right there and then this on both sides and I'm trying to keep this everything related to the dump feature keep it in good shape because I don't need it so I'm gonna try to sell it so if there's anybody out there interested it will be for sale so hit me up so yeah, I'm going to get the forklift under the front here. Get the forks up under there just for some added safety. And let's start uh, throwing some sparks and see what we can get done. Give this a few good blows and see if I can see it crack. It's not going to move because I think this is pretty rigid and it's still welded on the other side. But I just want to try to see if it's cracked. That way I know it's free. Y'all hear that pop? She's free. Now to the other side. Here's the first side y'all saw. Not a very pretty cut. I wasn't in a very, my most comfortable position, but that's free. And over here, I was in a more comfortable position, made a cleaner cut. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but you can see all the way under there, it's open. There's one little bitty piece right there, but that won't hold it. Now I'm gonna see what happens if I raise it up a little bit and I can get this safety arm out from under it. And I should be able to let the hoist down and the forklift should be, should keep the bed up. So let's see what happens. Okay, going up. Yeah, 
See, that just fell way back. Coming on down. Now the only thing holding it is the forklift, so now I'm gonna let her down. Probably line those up so it'll sit down flush. Now let's let this girl down and work on the rear back, the pivot point. There we go. I don't want to lift it too far, or I'll smash the cab with the headache rack. Now I got these free. The bed can actually come off now. But before I do that, I'm going to cut these welds along the back of this headache rack because that headache rack is coming off. Because the easy loader that's going here all the way across. The headache rack, number one, would be in the way of it. And number two, the easy loader is kind of a headache rack in itself. So this one needs to be gone. So I'm going to climb up there, cut these, then take the bed off, put it on some saw horses, and then I can focus on cutting these channels back in there. Third time's the charm. I started out closer to the headache rack because there should be more weight down there. But it didn't work so I kept having to move to the left. Each time I did that I had to raise it up higher because that dump assembly is there and I couldn't get my forks through if I didn't lift it up. So. Here's the third shot. I may, my look, I went too far. Yeah, I think I went a little too far. So set her back down.
we go. Not perfectly balanced, but it'll work. Freedom. That looks naked. Yeah, all this stuff here was, it sticks up above, so I had to raise it way up so I could get under there and find the balance point. So, set this sucker down. All right, back for day two on the bed modifications, I guess you could say. Yesterday evening after I quit, turned the camera off, went ahead and took all the bolts out that hold the dump frame on the chassis. Didn't figure y'all needed to see that. It's just wrenching some bolts out of there. And then today we're gonna be taking all this off which isn't too bad except now we got to get all this electrical for the unit out of out of the frame pull the cord for the remote out of the cab the hydraulic lines for the cylinder they routed under a cross member so I've got to unhook them here pull them through so we can lift this bad boy off here this is the triple battery setup that I mentioned earlier I don't know if I mentioned it in this video or the previous one but these trucks you can get a optional triple battery option and from the factory they have them temporarily mounted back there behind the cab so what it looks like to me is Whoever outfitted this truck with the, pardon the highway noise, but whoever outfitted the truck with the dump bed, they make their own battery compartment. Mounted it over here, which I don't like, but I'm planning on moving it up there, like most of the standard models. Anyway, all we got is a one, lead on the positive we'll take that loose and then start unclipping a whole bunch of zip ties All this electrical is free. Now we'll get these hydraulic lines out of the way. They're routed under a cross member that's on the truck, so I can't. Gotta get them out from under there before I can lift this off. And 
and even though this is not their installed route hook them back up keep them fluid from getting contaminated Now all that's done, now all we have left is to get this cord pulled out of the cab. So that cord comes into the cab under the driver's seat. And it's for your remote to operate it. Obviously the remote's not gonna fit through the little hole. So we're gonna have to unwire it and then pull the wires through. And earlier we disconnected the battery so there's no power to the unit, so this will be safe to mess with. There we go. Alrighty, let's lift this thing off here. There we go. All right, back the next day, we got the dump hoist off the truck, and here it sits. Hopefully I can sell this thing and get rid of it. But it looks to me like whoever did the upfitting on the truck, like this from here back, seems like it came with the hoist like that's factory and then whoever did the upfitting added this framework towards the front got theories on why they may have done that but I'm not completely sure and we also I didn't film it because it was just more cutting and y'all seen plenty of that already but I got the headache rack off the flatbed so now we got just a flat deck sitting there now and it sits over here. Don't have much of a use for that. Don't want to scrap it. I can probably use this channel iron for something. So now we're going to move on. I'm going to extend this bed a little bit. So this is the front where the headache rack was. You can tell by the marks. Easy loader is going to sit up here in the front. Easy loader itself takes up 10 inches, but it has an extension that goes below the deck so you can weld some cross bracing to it. So that means you got to cut a hole for that, and that's a, uh, if I remember right, a six by 10 inch tube that goes below so you gotta cut a hole for that don't want to be I can't what I'm getting at is I don't want to set it flush with the front because I'd be cutting into the flange of the channel here 
don't want to do that so I'm going to move back two and a half inches so that means the easy loader is basically going to be taking up 12 and a half inches of the bed and in order to maximize the efficiency of the loader it, has, it can go in a 16 foot radius from the center of the bed so from there to the end of the bed you really need 16 feet or what I'm figuring is I can get six rows of my pallets across in order to get that I'm gonna have to extend this bed about 20 inches or so that way I can get 48 hives per layer and I think I should be able to get two layers so 96 hives total when I go to move them which will be pretty efficient because using the old regular pickup and a trailer and everything I can only get one layer of 48 so getting 96 will be quite the change for me so in order to do that this back channel you know it already has the pockets and the rub rail and the holes cut out for the lights so I'm gonna save that and move it back so what I'm gonna do is cut straight up and down there and then I don't want to cut the diamond plate all the way across so I'm going to get in this little gap that they left there and cut that and I'll butt up another piece of tread plate and have a cross member under there to support it and weld across there so yep more cutting more demo so get after it Handled with care. All right, y'all saw I got the, started cutting on the top side of the back of the bed where I'm gonna extend it. And then y'all just saw I got it flipped over. So now it's, here's where we're gonna, cut her off just gotta finish cutting the bottom side but first I think I mentioned it earlier in the video gonna go back replace these these are seven inch channels gonna go back with five inch to make the bed a little shorter on the truck make it easier on me and I think it might be better because this seven inch channel it's just the standard weight the webbing here is not all that thick so with it being taller there's more leverage on it to be moving this way as you can probably see in this channel right down there is a really good bend in it which is not good so I'm gonna go back with five inch channel and it's gonna be a lot heavier a lot thicker all the way around so this stuff is like nine 
9.1 or 9.3 pounds per foot and I'm going to be going back with 5 inch channel that's 9.0 pounds per foot so not a huge difference gonna torch cut all these gussets off just because that'll be a whole lot easier and then once they're all gone then I'll come back with the grinder and the cutting wheel and do a cleaner cut on there those two welds all the way down Rain has moved in, so I need to try to get this inside. Power free. got all the uh, old welds ground off of there from where we cut other parts off of this thing now we got good clean weld surfaces uh, and then we got our 
our back cap cut off. And then we got all of our, of course, we're gonna have to extend the plate and got that all smoothed up and prepped. Somebody's well job on that. Looked like a bunch of bird poop going down through there. So yeah, I think this may be a good place to end the video because we got all the, I think the demo phase may be over. <laughs> Hopefully. No more tearing stuff down and cutting stuff off. Hopefully now we're at the point. Today's Friday, it's too late in the day for me to get the new material I need to start putting this thing back together. So I'm gonna have to wait till Monday on that. But the next phase is gonna be cutting new parts and putting it on here and starting to put things together, hopefully. And then instead of feeling like I'm going backwards, then now maybe I can feel like I'm making some progress. Yep, the truck's all stripped down, ready for a new bed, hopefully. So, so yeah, all that's gonna be in the next video. So if any of that stuff interests y'all, hope to see y'all there. Thanks for watching.